woman's grief has captured the world's attention. She's believed to be the mother of one of the Iranian Canadians killed in the disaster last week. And in video posted to Twitter, you can hear her agony as she begs the Canadian government to help her. journalist who posted that video said the family had been warned not to talk to journalists. Foreign Affairs Minister Francois-Philippe Champagne retweeted the video and responded saying these allegations are disturbing and we will look into them. Just hours before the plane was shot down, Iran had been firing missiles at bases in Iraq occupied by U.S. troops in retaliation for President Trump ordering the killing of a top Iranian general. Tensions were high and Iranian defenses were on high alert for American retaliation. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau told me yesterday in our exclusive interview that if tensions had not escalated, those on board the plane would be alive today. And that's getting pushback in Washington today from some lawmakers who don't think the U.S. bears any responsibility whatsoever. Jackson Prosco reports. So what was the justification for the strike which killed General Soleimani? In Washington, lawmakers began probing the unintended consequences of President Donald Trump's decision to take out Iranian General Qasem Soleimani and whether that led directly to the downing of Ukraine International Airlines Flight 752. And many of my colleagues here started claiming it was a response because of the United States escalation. We have to ask, why was it worth turning the simmer up to a boil. The White House has claimed an imminent threat led to the decision to target Soleimani, but has struggled to offer proof. As reports suggest, the president may have authorized the strike seven months ago. Trump tweeted, it doesn't really matter because of his horrible past. If there were no uh, tensions, if there was no uh, escalation recently in the region, uh, those uh, Canadians would be right now home with their families. Speaking to Global News on Monday, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau suggested Flight 752 was shot down because of the confrontation between the U.S. and Iran. This is something that happens when you have conflict and war. Innocents bear the brunt of it. There's no blame here for America. Trump's Republican backers scoffed at that suggestion. Iran shot down commercial innocent airliner. There's no doubt where the blame lies. But there's no escaping the still unanswered questions about the targeted killing of Soleimani, how and why was the decision made, and why weren't allies like Canada given advance warning. The greatest strength we have is dealing with our allies. And we have had a recent history uh, of not consulting with our closest allies. Lawmakers are increasingly uncomfortable with the administration's shifting explanations for the decision to kill Soleimani. A growing number of Republicans are expected to vote with Democrats in the Senate on a bill to limit Trump's ability to go to war with Iran. Jackson Prosco, Global News, Washington. Another big concern about Iran is its efforts to build a nuclear weapon. The Iran nuclear deal signed in 2015 by a number of countries, including the U.S., put limits on Iran's ability to produce enriched uranium needed for nuclear weapons. But President Trump withdrew from that, and since then, Iran has gradually lifted all limits. Now, France, the U.K., and Germany say they're not ready to abandon the deal. Today, they triggered a formal dispute mechanism in it. Redmond Shannon explains what it means and how Iran is responding. Ever since Donald Trump withdrew from the seven-country Iran nuclear deal, Tuesday's move by Europe's three major powers was perhaps inevitable. This will make America much safer. When Washington reimposed sanctions on Iran, the Islamic Republic responded, reneging on the deal's restrictions on building nuclear weapons. The recent crisis that resulted in Iran shooting down Flight 752 has likely prompted this move by France, Germany and the UK to trigger the deal's dispute mechanism. The aim of the dispute resolution mechanism is not to reimpose sanctions. But really, the threat of new sanctions against Iran is what this move is all about. In November, protests over economic hardships saw a deadly crackdown. Iran's economy is strapped and the Euro Trio, or E3, is hoping the regime blinks. The U.S. pulled out thinking they would get a better deal later. 
The Europeans are trying to keep them in, saying it's the best deal they could get. Why not build on it instead of tearing it up? But just as the E3 moved to save the deal, one of its leaders appeared to undermine it. We've got to stop the Iranians acquiring a nuclear weapon. But if we're going to get rid of it, then we need a replacement. That statement from British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is being praised by a Trump administration that's ready to strike against Iran if it plows on and builds a nuclear weapon. They've been told by everyone that they had better get back to the negotiating table because there is no other option to prevent a, uh, a confrontation that would be devastating to Iran but also potentially to the region. Iran criticized Tuesday's move but said it is open to practical ideas that would keep the deal alive. Redmond Shannon, Global News, London.